Okay, now let's uh, do that numerical experiment. And uh, all I'm doing is uh, based on some Python package, which uh, I confess I found on the internet. And uh, you have the reference here. And uh, where you found. So uh, um, I haven't done much of this myself, actually. So most of it uh, really comes from the package and its examples. So um, I want to show you what uh, Tikhonov does for signal denoising and signal and for image restoration. And I will also apply a new operator, a new norm, the TV norm that I just briefly mentioned at uh, the end of the last video. Okay, so uh, everything is um, as I proposed. And um, so we take for the operator K, we take the identity operator and uh, we do that uh, on L2 of minus pi pi. And uh, we look at denoising of signals. So let's look at our setting. And uh, yeah, right. Where's my first? Yeah, here's my here's the, my start. So I am K is the identity operator, and uh, let's uh, take for U the characteristic function of an interval around zero. So uh, that function looks something like this, and since G the data is K U, uh, K the identity operator, G is exactly the same as U. Now. Um, we uh, we assume we have some noise in our measurement. So rather than this, we will me measure something like this. So that's the orange. Oh, I, I just noticed it's the wrong way here. So U, of course, is uh, the blue one, the one that we had also here. And G delta is the distorted measurement, which may look something like this. So there's some random normal noise on it. Okay, uh, one thing that I mentioned is that uh, at least for um, differentiable functions, the Fourier transform decays fast. So this one, uh, this function doesn't seem to be differentiable. So does it at least decay as well? And in fact, it does. And um, I've computed the Fourier transform here approximately. We'll do that more exact later. Um, uh, but I've computed it uh, um, and um, in a discrete way using the discrete Fourier transform. And uh, so you get coefficients AK, which we also had uh, in the lecture in the last video. And this is what I, uh, what I um, compute. So the zero Fourier um, component, A0 is the largest one, and then it uh, drops fast with k getting larger. Now, um, let me mention that uh, in this case, we have positive and negative values for k. So um, yeah, I've, I've just computed the Fourier um, modes like we had it in the definition with, with positive and negative k. And the zero Fourier mode is just here in the center. And you see that it decays fast to both sides. Okay, now uh, let's do the same thing for G delta. And you see, well, it, uh, it also decays, but we see that uh, the uh, if you look at relative errors, then uh, the Fourier modes around zero, so with a small k, are quite okay. Uh, and uh, those Fourier modes that are far further away are not okay. And the reason for that is we have a normal noise and the Fourier transform of a normal noise is almost constant, more or less. So uh, we get all the same errors here. We, we get the same additional, er uh, additional error here and here, but since this is almost zero, then uh, we get completely wrong results over here, right? So the relative error here is very large. The relative error over here will be very small. 
Now, um, think of what uh, the um, uh, singular value decomposition or this of um, what Tikhonov or uh, truncated singular value decomposition does. It limits the sums. So we would restrict ourselves to reconstructing our signal only from a small number of coefficients here. So if we do that, then we leave out the problematic part over here. And it's quite clear what happens. The noise will somehow go away. Okay, so uh, let's do that. And uh, let's, um, I define three regularization schemes. In the first one, we have true Tikhonov, and that's uh, uh, penalizing oops, the identity. So we are penalizing the norm of U, and we already know that this is for um, image denoising, that's not a good choice because it just multiplies everything by a constant. Then uh, we take the two norm of the first derivative and we take the two norm of the second derivative that amounts to choosing n equals zero, n equals one and n equals two in the formulas that I just proposed. Okay, um, now let's perform the uh, regularization. And um, as I said, we have some error level delta which we assume to be known, and we assume that alpha has been chosen in an optimal way. I did that here just by trial and error. So uh, choosing Tikhonov with n equals zero doesn't make much sense. As we said, uh, this is just multiplying the data we have with a constant, and you see that's exactly what's happening here. Um, the, um, we had a step function or a characteristic function, which was one in this, um, uh, in this region over here and zero outside. And all that uh, the regularization does is it multiplies everything with one over 10, roughly one over 10 here. So um, that's exactly what we expected. Uh, that doesn't make too much sense. That's with the exact data G. Now uh, let's take the noisy data G delta. Same thing, right? I mean, uh, um, just penalizing with the norm doesn't care. We're just multiplying the function with a constant, or the, the data with a constant, and uh, it's not removing any, it's not removing anything. It's not removing noise. It's just not doing anything. It's just multiplying. Okay, so, uh, but we um, found out that uh, taking the, uh, the two norm of the first derivative actually uh, is much nicer. It um, damps the high component Fourier modes, which we now saw are the problematic ones. So let's see what happens. So we penalize now the first derivative and well, first of all, we see more or less this is what we expected, right? I mean, the, the shape is much better here. We've somehow removed the, more, the noise. There are some problematic things over here, but generally the shape now looks quite okay, right? I mean, uh, maybe we should have taken alpha even a little bit uh, um, higher so that even more noise would have been uh, removed. But anyway, my, that's, not, that's not too bad, right? The bad thing is that we lost the sharp um, step over here. We lost the discontinuity. Rather than um, a discontinuity, we now have a very smooth edge over here. And also it's going down very smoothly over here. Now, why is that? Although we, uh, are, we were working with uh, correct data on the left-hand side, where we took the regularization, which means we damp the high Fourier coefficients. And to represent a jump like this or a discontinuity, we need the high Fourier uh, coefficients. So clearly, this has to be uh, much smoother than the original. So we're losing the, the edge. And uh, in imaging, that's often very much of a problem because when you do segmentation, for example, when you want to find out where the liver is uh, in, um, in, a, in an image, then you find these, you're looking for these jumps, right? And uh, now this is no longer a jump. It's, it's a very continuous, smooth walk over, right? So um, it's very difficult to see in this image that actually here's something that's completely different.
different, a, a completely different structure from this one over here. And um, if you look exactly, then maybe this one was even better, right? I mean, uh, although the image, although the signal is noisy, uh, you could immediately say, okay, that, that's, that over here is something that's completely different from the rest with a sharp edge over here. So you would easily be able uh, to say, to give some limits on uh, the Fourier, on, on the image here, on, on the structure here, but you would be, it would be much harder in this one. So I'm not even sure whether, although this is less noisy, um, this is even a better signal than before. Okay, um, that was n equals one, and uh, we see we already found out that for n equals two, uh, the um, we get even a sharper uh, transition zone. And uh, let's see what happens with n equals two. Well, it looks better, right? But uh, also, it's 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 still not perfect. Right. Um, looking at uh, the the left image, we now see that there's even something happening around the edges. We get a maximum and a minimum that's less than zero and higher than one, which may be strange. Uh, so um, uh, it doesn't keep the maximum, which is not good. And um, if we go to uh, to the noisy image, well, that's not too bad actually. We have removed the noise, and uh, well, we, we still have kind of a steep transition here. So, um, well, I would I would say this is this is okay. Huh? Still, although this is obviously continuous, and it's not a discontinuity. Okay, um, and, and if, if you look at this, it doesn't, of course, it doesn't completely remove the noise, right? I mean, there's something over here happening that's still due to the noise. Okay, so uh, one conclusion is choosing the right norm, like choosing the correct regularization param parameter is important and uh, is a delicate task and it's not easy. Okay, uh, but uh, since we are with the uh, regularization parameter, let's look at the impact of that as well. And let's repeat that uh, um, experiment with n equals two now for different values of the regularization parameter. And what we find here, so alpha just right, I think that's the, the one that I had above and which I found the best. Now, uh, if we take alpha too large, what does that mean? Well, we are, uh, if alpha is too large, then um, we are uh, damping too much. So uh, we are leaving out too many Fourier modes in the reconstruct in the uh, construction of our U alpha plus. So there are less terms, and uh, well, we would expect that uh, it's even more, um, uh, it's even smoother, and that's that's true, right? I mean, this one is, is quite okay. So there's a steep transition here. If we take alpha too large, the noise is probably even a bit, little bit better, but now we get an even smoother transition and it's, probably, for example, even harder here to tell where that structure in the center actually is finished. Okay, what happens if alpha is too small? Okay, the alpha too small, that would uh, indicate that we take too many terms. Uh, and um, so uh, we take into account terms that have a large relative error. And so we're not removing uh, the noise at all. And uh, that's exactly what happens here. So if I take alpha too small, I more or less get back my original uh, my, my original data. Not too much was done actually here. I also get back the steep transition. That's great. But also I didn't do anything. I mean, the, the noise here is more or less like it looked on the original data. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's the discussion of Tikhonov, but um, I promised you to uh, that there are other regularization methods we, which we might get back uh, towards the end of the lecture. But at least at this point, I would like to give you an outlook. And um, 
Now, the problem with linear regularization was that more or less they behave all the same. So um, with respect uh, to Fourier, high Fourier modes, high, highly oscillating functions are dampened and um, low Fourier modes are kept. So uh, we will always get filtered versions that look very smooth and that's true for any linear regu yeah, regularization method. Now, um, maybe there's nonlinear regularization methods and I'd like to define one. And uh, that's exactly what I proposed. So we define the TV norm as the one norm of the gradient of U and then that's somehow extended to uh, step functions and to more functions in L2 so that we can actually apply it also to non-differentiable functions. Um, and of course, the corresponding functional that we try to minimize is uh, we take the admin of norm k u minus g squared plus now the, that TV norm. Okay, um, why does that actually make a difference? Well, there's a simple reason for that. And um, assume now, assume for the moment that U is in fact differentiable and that it's monotonous. So that means uh, its first derivative does not change sign on, uh, on minus pi to pi, it should be, well, whatever. Um, then uh, the TV norm of U is uh, defined as the one norm of, so if, it's, if it's one dimensional, then the gradient is just uh, the first derivative. So absolute value of first derivative of x dx. Now, if that doesn't change sign, then this is either plus or minus, depending uh, on whether that's uh, decreasing or increasing. The integral of minus one to one U prime of x dx and uh, which is nothing but u of one minus u of minus one, right? And the absolute value of that. Okay, so um, that means that any function that goes from minus one, uh, uh, one, minus one u of minus one to one u of one has the same seminorm. So, um, if you have, a, if uh, as far as we have uh, a monotonous, uh, monotonous functions, so if two functions share the same starting point and the same end point, they're monotonous. It doesn't matter how they look. So um, uh, edges are penalized in exactly the same way as a very smooth transition, which was different with Tikhonov and the two norms. Okay. Um, Example, we take these two signals. So they all go from, they both go from minus, minus pi now, minus pi minus one to pi one. And this is a, the blue one is a very smooth one. And uh, the orange one, that's an arctangent, arctangent, I think it's an arctangent. And um, so uh, it's very steep over here. Okay, for uh, the L2 norm, um, we would expect that uh, the L2 norm of the blue one is much smaller than the L2 no norm of the yellow one, of the orange one. And this is true, I mean, this uh, the uh, L2 norm uh, of, of the derivative, excuse me. The L2 norm of the derivative of um, the L2 norm of the derivative of the blue one is much larger, uh, much smaller than the L2 derivative of the orange one. And that's the reason why this one is penalized much more in the functional in the uh, uh, in the functional than this one over here. So if uh, there's a choice, then uh, the then Tikhonov um, regularization with using the L2 norm of the first derivative will always prefer this slope over this one. And that's more or less the reason why there are no discontinuities in, uh, uh, in the Tikhonov regularization that we saw. Okay, but of course, as I said, the TV norm of these two is completely the same. So um, that uh, TV regularization does not prefer one over the other. So um, 
it does not prefer continuous functions over, um, um, over functions with discontinuities, for example. Okay, um, yeah. What it does penalize is the difference between the maximum and the minimum. So we would expect that this somehow might get a little bit smaller when doing TV regularization, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Okay, um, so we compute uh, that minimum only numerically um, with a numerical optimization. And uh, the thing is that there is no analytical representation, even for simple cases, for uh, the TV minimization, for the TV regularization. And uh, so that's one of the connections to next year's uh, lecture by Benedict Wirt, which will be about optimization, where he will treat exactly the minimization algorithms that we need here. Okay. So what do we expect? Now, before I show you the image, what do we expect? We would expect that um, applying that TV regularization to our original uh, image, or to, that, um, to the um, characteristic function of the unit interval, um, we, that it keeps the edges where they are and uh, that it does not smooth them out like Tikhonov did. Okay, so same as before. So the left-hand side, that's uh, regularization of, the, uh, of, the, of G without any noise, and uh, the right-hand side is regularization with noise. Um, let's go to the right side first. Um, I mean, apart from some wiggling over here, which is probably due to the fact that the numerical algorithm wasn't perfect, um, we got completely rid of the noise, right? So that's great. This is a great result. The, the, the noise is completely gone. And um, the only thing that you notice, uh, and of course, it's uh, the, uh, the, um, um, the uh, transitions over here are as steep as they were in the original. So excellent. Um, as also, uh, but if you look very closely, then you find something that's surprising. Um, this used to go from zero to one, but now it goes from zero point something to one minus something. So although it keeps the shape, it has now changed the maximum and minimum, which may be a major problem, but um, there are ways of dealing with that. But overall, this, this result is absolutely excellent. Okay, um, again, we check what happens if alpha is chosen incorrectly. So um, here alpha is, I think it's the other way around now, if alpha is um, to, uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I think this is, uh, here's TV with alpha just right, that's what we had. Um, now, if uh, alpha is chosen too large, then um, we, yeah, this is, uh, the uh, titles are incorrect, if, uh, is chosen too large. Then in this case, this doesn't have very much of an impact, but uh, you see that uh, the contrast is even smaller here. So uh, um, the, the property that we just observed that uh, the minimum and maximum changed, it's getting even worse here, right? I mean, the, the image is in a way still nicer, right? The, the signal is still nicer, but um, the, the loss of contrast here is getting even bigger. So that's what happens if we choose alpha too large here in this case. Now, what, what happens if we choose alpha too small? Of course, then uh, we expect that we uh, do not completely remove the noise, and that's exactly what happens. Now, some... Uh, um, some regions over here where the noise is kept. However, now we are getting back, almost getting back to the original contrast from zero to one. So maximum and minimum are almost kept here in the correct range. Okay, so, uh, but this is a great result. Overall, this is a great result. I mean, the, the shape was not changed more or less um, 
whenever we chose the regularization parameter, and that was completely different when we used Tikhonov with the L2. Okay, but uh, since we did Tikhonov, um, and since we did linear re regularization, there must be some reason why this is not always used and not often used. First of all, one of the problems here is uh, that there is no analytical representation. So you will always have to resort to numerical algorithms and optimizing uh, such functions or optimizing uh, the, the TV defining the, uh, the uh, minimization problem that defines the TV regularization may not be that easy and may be a major task and take a lot of time, which you do not have when you process medical imaging. But there's um, even one, th one thing that's, uh, that's maybe even a little bit worse. Um, what I showed you up to now was the ideal image. Now let's go to something else and um, let's choose the sign instead of the characteristic function of uh, on minus one one. So uh, we repeat everything as before, but this one, uh, this time we are observing the sign so um, that uh, so the function g and the function u are um, yeah well, uh, that's that's our original function no noise so g is equal to u and um, this is the same with uh, some noise added okay now we do exactly the same as before we apply uh, we look for we, we fix an alpha and we look for the regularized solution and this is what it looks like and that's not so nice, right? I mean, um, we expected the sign, and well, it it changed it changed the shape this time, and even in a way which we might not like. Um, the uh, over here for the for the noisy um, for the noisy signal um, the noise has been removed quite nicely that was okay but still we have these plateaus over here and we have even small plateaus embedded over here so um, that's not good now why is that even problematic now think of a medical image and uh, I'll, I'll show you in the next section that you can actually do this for in 2D for images. And uh, then these um, plateaus over here will correspond to spots in the image. Now, uh, think of a doctor looking for a tumor uh, in a medical image. Then he will, and he will discover spots all over the place. And uh, I mean, we have one here, a large one, which doesn't really exist. We have a spot over here. We have some small spots here. And uh, he will have to decide whether these are artifacts or whether they are real. And um, that's very difficult. So definitely in this case, he would definitely like to stay with his original images because there at least one can easily tell uh, whether something by with the eye whether uh, something is noise or whether it's um, um, wh whether it's an artifact that's actually there. So uh, one has to be very careful with the total variation uh, regularization. It may deliver absolutely excellent results if you have something like blocky images, but if you have smooth transi transitions, then you must be very very careful. And um, yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind. So again, choosing the right norm uh, in the minimization, in the uh, minimization that defines the regularization is a very difficult task and is a very important task. Now, the question is, can we also do this on images? Because we are finally interested in images. And um, well, actually the thing is that um, there's more or less no difference. Um, think of an image as a, as a function on uh, my uh, on zero zero one on the interval zero one squared. Then uh, you can decide. Then you can um, just reformulate everything which I did, and um, it just boils down to the same uh, to the same results. 
to show you that this can actually be done, um, I want to sh show you a little bit more practical example. And um, I have a, an, um, an image which we will always take as the example for a computerized tomography image that the Shep Logan Phantom, I think it's on the next page. Um, and uh, I will um, I will apply total variation regularization to uh, to that image. And uh, now, of course, we uh, if we want to penalize the gradient, we have one uh, derivative in the x direction, one derivative in the y direction, and that's all that's that's defined over here. So, um, oh, by the way, uh, the PDF of this and uh, the program code are both in the learn web. So, if you want to play around with this, then that's uh, very very simple. Okay. Um, let me look at the yes. I will look at a little bit more practical problem this time. So um, I don't take the data as uh, the identity operator. So I'm looking not looking at k as the identity operator, but uh, I will look at k as the uh, as an um, as an operator that um, that removes. Um, some images, some values, some parts of the image from the image. So um, let's assume that this is the original image. Um, and what I have is a distorted image. Uh, so uh, an image where a lot of um, uh, uh, dots are now missing. And let's assume that I know which dots are missing, right? So uh, K now is an operator from a larger space to a smaller space where uh, that leaves out all the dots that are not present over here. So uh, in this case, I think I left out about 40%. It looks a little, like a little bit more, but um, I think I left out about 40% of the image and I also added some noise. So it's the same problem as before. I have Ku. I um, I observe. I measure Ku plus n, uh, n uh, normal distributed noise, and uh, K now a restriction operator that more or less deletes a known number of pixels in the original image. Okay. Um, so let's perform the TV regularization. And again, what, what do I expect? Well, I uh, expect that uh, the um, that TV fills in the gaps. It somehow restores this image. It computes the, K, uh, the, the inverse uh, operation of K. So it will transform the distorted image to, uh, to the normal image space. And it will do it in such a way that uh, the um, uh, that the one norm of the first derivative will be minimal. Okay, so let's see what comes out of that. Yes, and it doesn't look too bad, right? I mean, um, think of how bad the image was and um, it filled in the gaps and it did that really nicely so that uh, this one over here is, is quite okay, right? You see the big structures, they're all back and you would not have been able to see these in the original image without any processing. So, um, and also the, um, the, the frame over here that we have, it's, it's all not that bad, right? I mean, everything seems to be, um, seems to be quite okay. Um, there are some drawbacks. Uh, when we later will um, look into this, then we'll see that the main problem with this phantom is in the reconstruction, in the uh, image that the, uh, that the doctor sees, these ellipses over here should still be separated. Well, if you look there, they're completely gone, right? Um, but but the noise was just simply too big for that. So I, that's um, that's the problem here. And uh, but one thing that's probably even worse, if you look very closely, then uh, we had these plateaus in uh, the in the original in the in the when we restore when we restored the sign and if you look very closely then you will see some plateaus over here as well and that's exactly what i meant when i said that the doctor will now have to decide whether um, 
to whether these plateaus, whether these spots correspond to something that's real or whether they're just artifacts. So if you look over here, then you see that there's a spot over here. Here's a spot. Here is definitely a spot, but that com uh, that uh, corresponds to a real uh, to a real um, object over here. So um, it's not that easy. So TV regularization will introduce additional spots, even here where we are where where we have constant um, functions. So step um, um, staircase functions, piecewise constant functions. Um, and uh, you, you already guess that this will be even more problematic when we have continuous transitions. So um, this may be problematic. Uh, you have to keep this in mind. And uh, so that tells us that nonlinear regularization is also not the end of the story. And in fact, in medical imaging, the uh, regularization method used is still a linear one. So finally, it's based on something that's tikhonov like or TSVD-like. OK, um, so since that is the case, um, and since we found here that uh, the Fourier transform is at the basis of the analysis of many of these uh, regularization operators, um, we will now turn to Fourier transform. And uh, we will um, start off by defining the Fourier transform and writing down a lot of properties, which we will later use.